shift stopover, one person. Does that mean we're only welcoming one guest today? Look! That figure on the wharf! It looks like Kazuha! Greetings, Traveler and Paimon. I heard there would be guides for the Iridori Festival, but I didn't expect it would be you two. <laughs> we didn't expect to see you either! Returning as a guest for the Iridori Festival, no doubt! I was a little surprised myself when I received the invitation. But after wandering the outside world for so long, it's good to have an opportunity to return to my homeland and pay respects to my old friends. Kazuha. When we saw you in the distance just now, you seemed to be looking for something. What happened? Ah, yes. You see, when I came off the boat with everyone just now, I suddenly heard light footsteps around me. I could tell they were not footsteps of a regular passenger. But by the time I turned around, the person had already disappeared. I only heard a splash come from below the pier. Even though I didn't manage to catch a glimpse of them, I found this strange piece of paper by my feet. Oh, does the paper happen to have a poem written on it? Huh. How did you know? Fascinating. It's almost hard to believe such things could happen. Sure, here it is. Please, have a look. Last time, Aoi no Okina's poem ended with a reference to Akahito. And sure enough, this is a story about him! The story this time basically says that Akahito got his name from his love of red seals. However, the Shogun discovered that he had committed plagiarism, and he was soon exiled. Well, if Paimon were to rate today's story, it sounds pretty unfortunate. I don't think there's anything particularly wrong with this story. I too was once wanted as a criminal by the Shogunate. So I'm not all that different from Akihito mentioned in this story. But according to the story, Akihito was exiled by the Shogun because of his wrongdoings. You did nothing wrong, Kazuha. Ah, by the way, you mentioned that your friend has been struggling because he's unable to sign his name quickly, right? In Liyue and Inazuma, there is a saying, that which has been stamped has also been signed. Perhaps using a seal could be a feasible solution. While sailing at sea, I sometimes carve things to pass the time. If you wish to create a stamp for his seal, I might be able to help. Interesting. A story of the five Kasan appears again, and with a timely solution. A stamped seal, huh? Hmm, let me think. Indeed, it is an efficient solution. If we use a stamp, then Xingxia won't have to struggle with his handwriting anymore. However... Since Xingxiao's signature has been previously revealed to the readers, it would seem... Insincere if he only used the stamped seal for his new books. But I have another idea. Using a seal is a part of it, of course. Uh, let's go to Uya restaurant now to discuss my idea with everyone. Yes, that's it, Jenny. Your writing has greatly improved today, which means yesterday's intensive training was effective. My apologies, but I simply can't do it anymore. My hands are so sore that I can't even move them anymore. Oh, I should have known better than to read novels during calligraphy class. You just had a ten minute break. Come on, you can do this. When it comes to pushing a deadline, there's no one more brutal than Mr. Hirayama. No wonder Lady Yai would always send the editorial director to handle troublesome authors. 
Whoa, this is getting scary. It hasn't even been that long and Shicho's already zombified. Mr. Hirayama, we found a solution that might just solve our dilemma. In both Liyue and Inazuma, seals are widely used as the equivalents of a signature. If we use a stamp to leave the author's seal on the books, then we could make the signature process a lot easier. Of course, a seal on its own is not enough. So, I propose that each signature consists of two parts. First, we'll use a personalized seal. We can simply carve one using Chen Yu's signature as the design. In addition, I'll also design a simple but elegant pattern that's easy for Chen Yu to write. That way, he will only need to draw a simple pattern on each book. Hmm, let me think. Alright, I think that would work. Not only does it still involve the author's own handwriting, but the result should be very beautiful as well. So, what you mean to say is, I've been saved from this predicament? Mr. Hiriyama, it suddenly occurred to me that the reason we gave up on live book signings previously was because it would take too long for the author to sign each book. But if we adopted Calx's proposed method, we might have enough time to do signatures at the live event. And if all the authors signed their books in the same fashion, then Gen Yu's signature wouldn't look out of place. Well, if you think it's feasible, I would certainly be happy to design signatures for the other authors as well. Yes, and you may leave carving the stamps to me. In that case, I shall contact the other two authors participating in the new release event. It is a great honor to use a signature designed by Calx. My pen name is quite complicated and isn't suitable for signing events. However, if we implement this new format, then it'll be a dream come true for me as well. Great! Looks like everyone's on board with the idea. I'm sorry to have kept you busy for so long, Jin Yi. Please, take the next few days to have a good rest. We'll handle everything from here. The books that Jin Yu already signed can be used as special prizes in future events held by the I Publishing House. <sighs> we did it. The event is saved. Thanks to everyone's efforts, Onodera and I are finally free of that mess. <laughs> That's right! You're finally free, Xingqiu! Maybe you should step outside for some fresh air. We still have some time to burn. Where should we go next? Traveler, there you are. Oh, it's Ayaka! And Venti! That's an interesting combo. I was just going to the festival venue to prepare the Ikebana lesson, when I found a strange piece of paper on a flower stand. This bar just happened to be close by at the time. He informed me that you've also found similar papers recently. As such, we came together to find you two. But the paper she found isn't quite the same as the ones we found before. Here's the paper. Please have a look. Huh. All the poems we found before were roughly the same length. But this one is only two lines. And even though there are only two short sentences, Neither of them are next to the title or centered on the page. Hmm. The position of the writing seems to indicate that there is other content written on this paper besides these two lines. If we take the poem literally, it reads, Dip this paper in water, and see the truth naturally appear. Speaking of which, I have an ancient text at home, specializing in ancient and exotic stories. It mentions a special ink that will show itself when wet, and disappear when it's dry. So, shall we give it a whirl? It just so happens that there's a pond nearby. Wow, look! It's really working! More words have appeared on the paper! Let Paimon see what it says. Hmm. The story says that after Sumizomi got the collection of poems from Akihito and put them into a stream of water, the plagiarized words in the poem became blurry. Huh? Why would that happen? You see, Paimon, in the past, when printing was not yet well developed, 
handwritten text could easily become smudged in books when exposed to moisture. To ensure the text lasted longer, they'd either write using a special ink or coat the paper's surface with a waterproof coating once the writing was finished. Such special inks are time-consuming and laborious to produce, and the waterproof coating could also prove just as difficult. However, since Akihito's poetry collection was an important gift to be presented to the Shogun, surely one of those two methods was used to protect it. But as for the plagiarized poems, not only would they lack Akihito's seal, but the words would also react differently when exposed to liquid. <sighs> Which means Akihito didn't plagiarize his work! He was set up! Yes, it appears that this is the truth that Sumizome's story is trying to convey. Although the story is saddening, I've decided on the subjects to use for Akihito and Sumizome's portraits. Kazuha, Ayaka, would you be willing to be the models for my paintings? I would be delighted. Yes, as would I. There you go. The next two portraits should be ready in no time. <sighs> yes. And now that all four stories have all been collected, the story of the five Kasen is now fully completed. Long ago, Inazuma had five legendary poets. People bestowed upon them the title of the Five Kasen. One year, the poet Suiko made his way to Tenshukaku and presented the Kasen's work for the Shogun's perusal. But a page from the works of Aoi no Okina had been torn out, and Suiko was questioned regarding the matter. Suiko pleaded guilty. He admitted to drinking at the tavern the night before, and vaguely recalled a mysterious figure approaching while he was intoxicated. That figure was none other than Aoi no Okina himself. This turn of events had begun with an unnamed individual, under whose coercion Aoi no Okina was forced to take drastic measures to retrieve a page of poetry. He knew nothing of this individual's true intentions. All he knew was that the poem had to do with an old acquaintance, Akahito. Akahito had once belonged to the Five Kasen. Each poem he composed, he marked with a scarlet red seal, hence the Aka in his name. Such a distinguished writer was he, and yet one of the poems he had submitted the previous year was found to be plagiarized. Akahito was exiled for his crimes, and only four of the Five Kasen remained. Sumizome went over Akihito's poems, and noticed that the plagiarized poem lacked his seal. She immersed his poetry in a stream nearby, and only on the plagiarized poem did the ink run. Aoi no Okina passed by and witnessed Sumizome's doing, which he then recorded in a poem. Thus transpired the events of Suiko's poetry submission, and this is where the story comes to an end. of the five Kasen, there's still one thing Paimon hasn't been able to figure out. One of the five Kasen is called Kuranushi, right? It's just that, how could the story of the five Kasen finish without him appearing at all? Oh, <laughs> oh have you really not noticed? Huh? Not noticed what? <sighs> this is no time to be playing games, Tone Deaf Bard! What he means is that the story of Kuronushi was already embedded within the four poems. Huh? Really? That's right. The key lies in the poem that Aoi no Okina wrote after seeing Sumizome rinsing the poetry collection. An average person could never understand the scene of a young girl washing Akahito's poetry collection in a stream. Even Aoi no Okina couldn't figure out the meaning behind Sumizome's actions. 
He was simply reminiscing and thinking about his old acquaintances. However, for the perpetrator who framed Akahito, it was completely obvious. He was worried that if this poem was seen by the Shogun, then the Shogun could discover the truth behind the plagiarism incident. If that happened, then he'd be finished. So in desperation, he threatened Aoi no Okina to make him tear out this poem. Which means... The one who threatened Aoi no Okina is the same person that framed Akahito! What? Kuranushi? That's right. Though there are only four poems, they still managed to tell the complete story of all five Kasen. Since the Shogun mentioned in the poems is certainly not the one of the five Kasen, the only character left is the mysterious one with an unknown identity. Oh, okay. Paimon is finally starting to get it now. However, this also brings something else to mind. The story of the five Kasen has more or less reflected everything that's been happening around us lately. Which begs the question, is there a Kuronushi in our world as well? A Kuronushi? In our world? Hmm, speaking of which, I wonder if our dear Kazuha has come up with anything. Oh, right! Kazuha! He's been pretty quiet this whole time. Let's ask him! Hey, Kazuha! Are you okay? You've been standing in front of this blank canvas for a while, and you don't look so good. Apologies for making a wild assumption, but has the story of the Five Kasen reminded you of anything? Yes. A few things did come to mind, actually. However, they were nothing more than some past incidents regarding my family. I don't mind sharing the stories, but I'd prefer not to bring you any more trouble. Hey, we're all friends here, Kazuha. You can always tell us whatever's on your mind. Kaidehara, please forgive my assumption, but perhaps you were thinking of the ride in Gokuden? The ride in Gokuden? What's that? It appears that Miss Kamisato and I were thinking of the same thing. But it also has much to do with the Yashiro Commission. It would be improper to speak of it here without the consent of Miss Kamisato. It's fine. Those of us here are all trustworthy, so there isn't any harm in it. However, this matter is somewhat complicated and may be difficult to explain. Let me start with a ride in Gokuden. <sighs> As you all know, the Yashiro Commission's primary purpose is managing ceremonial and cultural affairs, and Inazuma's art of forging swords is a very important part of our culture. The Raiden Gokuden were once the top five schools of the forging art in Inazuma. Although these families were swordsmiths by craft, they also held many important positions in the Yashiro Commission. Unfortunately, of the five, only the Aminoma art still maintains its artisan lineage. The descendants of the Ishin art are also still alive, but the craft has been lost to time. The descendants of the Ishin art are none other than the Kaidehara family. Whoa! We knew Kazuha came from a noble family, but we had no idea about his connection to the Yashiro Commission and sword making. Yes, but that's all part of the past now. The Ishin art was lost with my great-grandfather's generation. My grandfather was dissatisfied with my great-grandfather's lack of effort. When he was young, my grandfather traveled all over Tevat to find a way to revive the family business. But it was to no avail. And in my generation, our last remaining family property was lost as well. I heard my elder brother mention that the decline of the ride in Gokuden happened very rapidly. In the span of a few decades, three of the family suffered various misfortunes and disappeared completely. Later, there was speculation that all of these misfortunes stemmed from some background machinations, meaning that someone wanted to wipe out the Raiden Gokuden. However, since not every family of the Raiden Gokuden came to ruin, such explanations were treated as nothing more than a conspiracy theory. Indeed. I've also believed such ideas were just theories and rumors. However, I know that a major incident happened to my great-grandfather when he was young. Not only did it affect the Kaedahara clan, 
but it nearly jeopardized the Kamisato clan's position in the Yashiro Commission as well. After reading the story of the five Kasen, I can't help but feel like it's pointing me toward the truth behind that incident. What exactly happened to your great-grandfather, Kazuha? I still can't say. I need to speak with someone to verify the details. Let's meet here again at noon tomorrow. I will tell you everything I know then.